Hello and thank you for joining us on the Friday edition of Journalist Hangout. I am Kemi Foladiemo. Today on the program, Azonto, the leader of the Bainue cult group who killed more than 300 people arrested by the army in Taraba State, just as three masterminds of the Bethel High School students' abduction also got nabbed. And later on the show, the army vows to deal with female soldier for dehumanizing core member in a viral video just as Governor Ikpazu tasks Abia Commissioner of Police to arrest policemen who raped polytechnic students. I'll be hanging out today with Babajide Koladi Utitoju and Paul Dada. Good evening, gentlemen. Welcome to the program. It's good to have you join us. Good if you're ready, join this hangout. That's now. Well, it's cheering to hear some positive news in the fight against insecurity in some parts of Nigeria. In Benue State, for instance, Juan Azonto, the notorious leader of a cult group in the state that killed more than 300 people, has now been arrested by men of the Nigerian army in Taraba State. And in Kaduna State, police also arrested three of the 25 masterminds of the Bethel High School students' abduction. We can only urge uh, security personnel to raise this temple. Kudos indeed, uh, BKO, to uh, the Army and all its partners in seeing this, uh, this Benue development now, in seeing this through, talking about the arrest of Azuntu. Yes, um, I am particularly um, very happy about the positive development um, emanating from men of the Operation Wild Stroke um, backed by vigilantes. Um, Azonto, we've discussed the matter of Ondofa Che Kele, alias Azonto, on this program um, in the past. Conservatively, between the time, because he is um, related to the late Tewase Akwaza, alias Ghana, who was the leader of a cult group in Benue State that was killing people, killing soldiers. Now, when uh, and for years, the army was trying to track this guy, make him pay for his sins, but they did not succeed. They will launch operation, they will not succeed in getting hold of him. In exchange for peace, the governor of Benue State gave a Kwanza, um, uh, what was it called? An offer. Uh, offered him amnesty. Mm -hmm. But after that, just as we've seen in the North uh, West, he went back. After the amnesty agreement, he went back to committing all kinds of crimes. Because the truth is, when you give bandits amnesty, it will never be enough for them to take care of themselves. They've been used to making big money. For example, someone who could earn about uh, 300 million from one operation, you now offer them amnesty. The kind of money that, meanwhile, the amounts, as the Yorubas will say, had become white. So there is nothing that you can give him in the exercise of uh, amnesty and the rest that will be as big as what he used to make during his years of, uh, of committing crime. So Tewase, alias Ghana, went back to committing crimes, went back to abducting people, went back to killing people, you know, including security. Um, uh, agents. Now, because the killings were becoming too rampant, the senator representing the Sankara zone of Benue State, that's the former governor, Gabriel Suswam, appealed to the governor to give Tewase Akwaza another amnesty. That this time he had promised that he will no longer take to crime that he had become a changed person. And they gathered, um, they gathered traditional rulers, big politicians, 
and there was a reception in Casina Alla Stadium. That's the Casina Alla area. That's the zone, the area that is called San Kira zone. So they gathered people in the stadium and they were jubilating that ah, peace had come to the area, to that uh, uh, territorial zone because they had agreed, Tewase, Akwaza alias Ghana had agreed to lay down his arms and embrace amnesty. The governor was then waiting for him in government house. So when the event ended, as they were going to um, Akodi, the army mounted a roadblock, got hold of him, and had him killed. That was what happened. And then they also arrested some of his own men who were going with him, who were on this party, going to see the governor, you know, where the amnesty program had been planned and all that. So the manner in which he was wasted by the army was what angered Azonto, Ondofa, Chikele, uh, alias Azonto, they now began a killing campaign, just typical of uh, uh, terrorists. Began killing people on, a, on market days. They will come to a market and begin to slaughter people. On one particular day, they killed 37 persons. Then big people in, uh, in Benue State from that area found it difficult to go home. Some of them will only go home with extreme security cover. Then something happened the elder brother of governor suswam they got hold of him and killed him i say way because they were now saying oh suswam and co leod so them out. leod mm -hmm. him to his death mm -hmm. you know but that was not what happened as far as the army was concerned it was not properly briefed about the amnesty program although the state government denied that the army's other argument was that they had never seen where somebody was given amnesty two times. <laughs> Which made sense. But look, you keep giving this guy amnesty, you, keep coming, and you keep coming back to kill us, to kill other people. Look, because we're talking about this guy killed 16 policemen in one day. I have dates because I had been tracking them for some time. 16 policemen in one day. There was another day they killed three policemen and the Chinese who are working on a cassava uh, um, uh, facility. So, now he now went to, you know, Operation Wild Stroke, the, 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 that military uh, uh, unit, their tentacles extend as far as Taraba. Taraba and um, Benue are quite close, especially in the Zakibiam, um, Kalsina, that whole area. So he went to Jalingo, lodged in an hotel. There were four men with him and two guests. The two of those men, he sent two of those men on an errand. They didn't know that the army had been tracking them. So they got hold of them and forced them to lead them to where the hotel, yes, the hotel where Azonto was staying. They then, the army now encycled the hotel and got him arrested. One of those guests fled. One of the guests fled, but um, they still have those four guys that were arrested with him, you know. And I'm just happy because even before now, progress had been made in terms of decimating his group. Yeah. They have succeeded yes. in killing a good number yes. of them. Uh, there are still a good. Uh, there are still some of them, are very dangerous ones, that are that are still alive uh, among. Uh, From the gang. Uh, yes, people like uh, Odo, people like uh, Aminu, Dana Sabe. Dana Sabe is an Ausa uh, guy, but part of his group, uh, Akat, Akat, and Full Fire, the most dangerous. <laughs> member of the group still alive is full fire so but the army are still it's closing in they are, they are looking for him people are confident that if they can get hold of these guys 
the threats that they constitute in that whole area will come to an end. Right. Because already now the threats have been reduced, reduced drastically by the campaign, the military campaign against them. In fact, there was a time that they came to Oshun State to show you how serious mm -hmm. yeah. our guys are. They came to Oshun State to arrest some of his men and he their girlfriends. Mm -hmm. They now took them back Bye. to Benue State where they led them to shallow graves where they buried their uh -huh. victims, including In two wells, place. two wells mm -hmm. that were filled up with dead bodies. Uh -huh. So these things had been happening and it just is just pleasing that at least we are coming to the end of the, 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 the nonsense that Azonto and others constitute. I, I particularly like the, the background that you give to this story, you know, because not many people would understand just what the average uh, Benue resident yes, people was passing, the was, was facing, mm -hmm. a, a talk less, you know, of victims who have had the ugly experience, you know, yes, of, yes, of, of... Yes, you know, we, we, we are this, more conversant with other... A lot of those things don't get reported. Absolutely, absolutely. But le let me get Paul Dada's take. How much of a breakthrough is, is this for you when you look at the trend uh, that, you know, first it was Ghana and uh, down to his lieutenant and, and with this latest arrest of Azuntu? Yes, it, it's, a major, it's a major breakthrough. Uh, uh, you know, this man is not, if it's not even, I think it's even fiercer than his, um, uh, his uh, deceased boss, the one that was killed by, by, the, by the army. His boss, who was also who was his, actually his cousin, he was the uh, deputy to 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 this other person, and um, it's very clear that even the amnesty that was that was offered was not necessary because you don't offer an amnesty to someone who is not repentant. Now it's very clear from what we see here that this man had perpetrated uh, a lot of um, um, atrocities. I killed so many people. You know, I, I, besides the, 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 the grave that uh, Gilles uh, spoke about, there was also a time that police had to go and demolish uh, two buildings where, that they were using as kidnapper dens. You understand? They are, they are kidnapped. They are, yes, they are dens where they, uh, people they kidnapped, where they kept them. You know? And then, like he said, they are so notorious. They have the, their tentacles are even spread to to or should stay they can escape anywhere now what i would say is that um it's it's a breakthrough but we need to learn from the fact that the death of ghana there was no let up in the space of in the space of atrocities that um uh, uh, they still com they continue to perpetrate despite Ga the fact that ghana died now, the fact that this man has been arrested does not mean that his lieutenant will also, uh, we now just... Ease, uh, ease in the operation. Uh, exactly. So they still they, remain a threat. They, they, they still remain a threat, and a, a, very, a very strong threat. So they must go after uh, these ones, too. Then we must, you see, we must um, not just be giving out amnesty anyhow, because when we give amnesty to people, we are actually saying that we are at a very weak, uh, a weak point, that they have an advantage over us. So let the authorities keep going after these guys, uh, yes, let them keep going after these guys and let them show that, look, darkness cannot prevail over the light in this nation. The people that perpetrate this mischief are fewer than good people. They can't continue to hold the whole state, the whole state to ransom. So we must show, we must show that we are better, we are greater, and we are stronger than they are. All right. Well, Bikio, what do you make of um, how formidable uh, the leftovers in Tewas's camp in, in Azonto's camp. Now, how, how much of a threat do you do you uh, see them as? Of course, with the persistent push uh, by Operation Well Stroke uh, team members. Yes, we are there before, and that um, encourages me to think that we are finally going to see the back of this extremely dangerous group. Um, the Chairman of uh, the local government, Honorable Alfred Atera, set up a group made up of young boys who are from the area, who understand the terrain very well, who know, who know all of these guys. You know, they grew up together, so you can't tell me stories about yourself. 
since we grew up together. So he is trying to do what was done in Borno State. You know, it was civilian JTF that chased Boko Haram out of Maiduguri Metropolis. Mm -hmm. Because they were going to their homes to fish them out. They knew everybody. They knew them. They grew up together, so you can't hide. Boko Haram was originally not staying in Sambisa Forest. They were in Maiduguri Metropolis killing people. If you were in a taxi and you spoke ill of Boko Haram in the taxi, before daybreak you will be killed. It was like that in Borno State. Before they were flushed out of Maiduguri Metropolis and had to go and reside in the bush. So now, Honorable Atera set up that group, working with the army. They know the bush, they know the forest. So they, they are taking the army to places where they know that these guys are. And it has helped in tracking and killing some of the most dangerous members of the group, like Dan Fulani, like uh, Bebatu and, and Clark. They've been killed. These are, they used to be very effective to the point that Azonto gave them um, different parts of Kasina Ala zone to man. That was his level of confidence and then they said, okay, this what you are in charge. You know? Now, apart from that... BK, well, let, me, huh? let me introduce them. We have um, our first caller from Ibadan. You're most welcome. Carry on, please. Hello. Good evening. Fola Adiyama. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Yes, good evening. Good evening. Papa Jideo, to talk to you. Good evening. This is your pal. Good evening. Thank God it's Friday. <laughs> you Very beat me to cap. it. I wanted to I don't comment know what on that. Maybe I will have to collect that cap as a gift for the weekend. Thanks. <laughs> All right. That's good. Now, I want to appreciate what is happening in that axis. And uh, Papa Jideo, to talk to you. Thank you for that uh, knowledge you have given to us of the event that has happened before the apprehension of this very man. But I will appreciate that proper justice should be meted on this man. They should not toy with it. That's number one. Number two, they should make it very speed so that it will be a deterrent to those people themselves that are make themselves keeping and even laws over the good people of this country, especially people in that area, so that they will be caught and uh, proper justice will be served and people that have been punished during the course of these people, they will now find out that, yes, the government of the day is working. And we thank God for this, and we appreciate this, and we pray that something like this will continue so that our country will come to experience good things. Thank you Mr. very Mr. and everybody over there, happy weekend. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very you. much. Same thank to you. you. Dear. Yes. Dear. As I'm speaking with you now, there's a meeting going on in uh, Todonga. That is the hometown of... Um, um, Azonto, his father, um, Akwaza's father, has been invited to that meeting. What they are doing is to mop up the weapons in the hands of these guys. Akwaza's father was told to release the weapons of his son, and he said he did not know where he kept weapons. But the, the chairman has said, Anyone connected to that group who refuses to disarm will be severely dealt with. So they are having that meeting. They don't just want to sleep on this success. You must mop up the, the arsenal of these uh, devilish people. If we don't mop up the arsenal at their disposal and make it difficult for them, if not impossible, to have access to fresh weapons, you will not be able to make real progress because with the weapon, a bandit feels superior to you and I. It may mm -hmm. not, if we are to go into hand combat, he may not be able to beat us. But a man who has a weapon can tell 200 people to sit down and they will obey him. So the first thing they are doing is to mop up weapons in that whole area. I must report that there had been a lull in attacks by them. You know, they were trying to blackmail the government. They told the government to allow them, that if government wanted peace, that government should allow them to be um, collecting taxes oh, in imagine? markets. So that, you know, that area is the food basket of our nation. So that if you are, you are bringing, um, you, you, you want to sell, Yam. 
in Zaki Biam, for example, they can say, okay, this is how much you pay. You are bringing yam to so Kasina Allah in a 911 Mercedes 911 truck. This is how much you pay. They wanted to be in position to come up with those levies and simply pay government whatever pleases them. They also told government because the gov government of uh, uh, um, Autumn banned the use of motorbikes. And that is their favorite means of moving around. They banned the use of motorbikes in that whole area. It became painful for them, difficult for them to move around. So they, told, they, they said if the government, government wanted them to cease fire, that they should rest, I mean, uh, uh, restore the use of motorbikes so that they can navigate the forest and other areas with it. But the government said, no, that ban stays. So they are already being emasculated. That's why the kind of reports that we were getting in March, when somebody will call home, there was a lecturer from um, uh, 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 Natural State University who came home with his wife, and they were murdered. They will come to a community, kill people, and set the houses they have blaze. Some of those reports we are no longer getting. So before to for them to have even for, for the security uh, agencies to have come all the way to Oshun State to arrest these guys, that should tell you the level of seriousness attached to defeating uh, Ghana's old gang and ensuring that um, they no longer constituted um, a threat to people in that area. Mm. All right. Well, before we wrap up the issue of um, the Benue insecurity situation, uh, so what are your final thoughts on, on this issue regarding the arms that could still be in circulation that the government and security forces are trying to mop up? Because uh, one point that I pick from BKO's uh, previous analysis is, and I want to compare it with you, that could that just be the missing link now in this issue or why uh, amnesty has been so you know, much of a failure. Should security forces or the government explore amnesty when it gets to a breakthrough? Like no. in this case of the arrest of, of Azoto now, now that it, uh, the, the remaining, whoever is left in the gang now may not have so much of a choice other than to surrender his or her weapons. No, I, I'm not sure that um, the notorious ones will want to surrender uh, their weapons willingly. Even with this? Yes, even willingly. See, the, the, the smaller fishes among them uh, could be turned into state witnesses. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like in the court, like those who are being used as uh, foot soldiers, those who are being used as uh, maybe carriers of the weapon, transporters of the weapons and all of the. But these ones should be made to face the full wrath of the law. Now, apart from the mop-up, we should also think about cutting off, identifying the sources of the weapons and cutting off the supply of the weapons. This, they, they get these weapons from somewhere. Where do they get them from? You see, we need to, because, of course, you can mop up these weapons, doesn't mean they can't get, they can't get more. more. You, you understand? So, who are they, where are they getting these weapons from? Is it with the connivance of some security uh, agents? Where are they getting these weapons from? You know, like the bandits, and the Bukhara, we know where they get these, these weapons. We know the route, route through which these weapons come. You, you, you understand? Some of them even come from outside, the outside borders, the uh, uh, porous borders. And and all so it could also be that these ones are also getting... There are, of course, there are gun runners that work with these guys. So mm. who are those gun runners? So they must cut off the supply of weapons. And I don't think we should be thinking of amnesty. Except we want to use those that are being used as um, messengers and all of that, who will probably give us, who will open a lot of cans of worms, you know, when these people are being prosecuted. All right. Well, we'll, we'll continue with our conversation on um, insecurity. We'll move on, uh, however, but that will be after this break. You're watching John Liz Hangout. Stay with us for more on the show.